Welcome to this episode of Eagle Air TV. I'm Al Justice. And I'm Eli Dean. This episode includes Blue Ribbon, Nick Sapella, Bunnies, Math Honor Society, Nick Sabans, and Boy Soccer. Eli, do you know what a blue ribbon school means? Ice cream? No. Phoebe Gardner takes a look. Earning the title of a blue ribbon school is the highest honor a school can earn. Dr. Kelly appreciates the students for all the hard work they put in to help win this award. So it's all about students and the success that they are having. So um, it's, I mean, obviously you have good teachers in the classrooms teaching the content, but um, the students are the ones who it measures their success. And so um, it's, it's all about students and the work that they put in. Um, it's coming to work, coming to school every day, um, ready to work, ready to learn. And um, we're very fortunate to have students here that take that seriously. Dr. Margie Van Dieven, the Commissioner of Education for Missouri, says there was a long list of requirements Nixa met to win this award. Well, primarily it is again looking at your uh, academic achievement in math and in English language arts and um, all of that is uh, reflective of some of the other great factors that we were talking about. I mean there are other uh, criteria points that the that the district needs to make in, in terms of making sure again that it's a safe and healthy environment, a place where kids can thrive uh, and that it is uh, in, in, in compliance with federal and state regulations. We uh, clearly came across as very high performing, uh, really able to uh, bring the community together and, and, and uh, be recognized for this great achievement and so having a high school in this uh, mix has been really exciting for us so we want to congratulate the students in the district for that honor. Dr. Kelly is still looking to make improvements to the high school. So I think for us, I think one thing that we need to start looking at is, um, you know, we're, we're doing a good job, obviously. If we weren't, we wouldn't be winning this award, but there is always opportunity to grow. And I think that's one thing that makes Nixie unique is we are always looking, how can we make ourselves better? Um, and I think one area that we need to look at is more um, in the area of other offerings for kids. What, what else can we offer for kids that's going to keep them engaged here at school? Um, what, what interests do our kids have? And so looking at things like where is the world at right now and what do they need from kids coming out of high school. Congratulations to all of the Nixa students, teachers, and administrators. This is a reflection of all your hard work. For Eagle Air TV, this has been Phoebe Gardner. Nixa Bell is a new choir class offered at the Nixa High School. Harris Eiberg takes us there. Nixa Pella is a new class for choir students this year. Daniel Gutierrez is the head director. Students were excited to have an a cappella group here at the high school. We did a survey with students and we asked them what additional interest that they had in singing. And the options were like show choir, uh, contemporary a cappella, uh, jazz choir, uh, barbershop music. And overwhelmingly, the number one choice was uh, contemporary a cappella music. Nick Cappella students are excited to go to competitions this year. We're doing a competition this year called the ICHSA competition. Uh, it's an international collegiate competition. It was made popular by the movie Pitch Perfect. It's the high school version of the same competition. Gutierrez says there are requirements to be in Nick Cappella. You have to be part of a regular varsity choir in addition to Nick Sapella. You would have to be involved probably in concert choir or chamber singers in order to be a Nick Sapella. You have to have really strong pitch. You have to have the ability to basically carry a part on your own because it's so few voices in the ensemble. Sophomore Gavin Collins plays a very important role in Nick Sapella. I am the beatboxer and the tenor, or kind of really whatever Nick Sapella needs me to do. Acapella is basically choir but without piano or about without accompaniment so it's all the human voice my favorite part is honestly kind of the connection that we make during the rehearsals i mean the thing about normal choir is in normal choir you got this huge group of people and it's like i mean even then it's not really much of a family they're kind of just people in your class but the thing was with a cappella there's such a smaller group of people and you'll learn a lot more and um, 
the um, connections become a lot deeper. Look out for more Nixapella performances throughout the year. For Eagle Air TV, this is Ares Eiberg. Believe it or not, we have bunnies right here at school. Adia Lancaster gives us more. Sure, we're seeing lots of new freshmen this year, but let's not forget about our new furry friends. This year at the Nixa High School, students are raising bunnies outside the COC building for agricultural science purposes. Agricultural science teacher Lena Stewart says the bunnies are for a student project. So the SAE stands for Supervised Agricultural Experience, um, and what that is or the goal behind that is for students to, let's say, have projects like our rabbits that we have, um, and they start out with a small side of things and then eventually they grow. Um, so whether that means financial wise or bunny wise, population wise, um, they kind of keep those transactions and they see their expenses and their growth. Um, what they do with that afterwards is um, they can compete with those projects and it doesn't have to be rabbits, it can be chickens, it can be cattle, it can be uh, working at like Nixa Hardware, it can be working at a food place, um, but they'll keep those records and they'll learn how to keep them accurately. Junior Renee McBee is supervising the rabbits for her personal SAE project. So far it's been just me with eight rabbits. It means basically I have my own little farm since I can't do this at home since I don't have space for it. There's the obvious responsibility part and then there's also understanding how these animals live. So like the water, how much they eat, how much you need to feed them, what they need to eat. So like hay, it's supposed to be a 75% hay diet and then the rest is supposed to be like pellets. And if you're ever interested in having your own furry friend, contact Renee McBee for the good price of only $25. For Eagle Air TV, this is Adia Lancaster. The Math Honor Society is an academic and competitive team offered to those who excel in math. Abigail Coburn gives us a deeper look. The Math Honor Society is a competitive academic team offered at Nixa High School. Alyssa Picorni is one of the co-sponsors of Math Honor Society. Math Honor Society, we offer peer tutoring um, after school and so kids can get tutored by a student that is either in college algebra, pre-calc, or calculus. So they would have had all the other lower level classes and so it's just a way for them to provide another tutoring opportunity. Um, to get help from like an upper level student. For Math Honor Society, we mainly offer the peer tutoring and then math team practice. My club students will go to math team practice and we do like practice tests, like just old versions that we have taken in the past at other tournaments that we've been to. I have mainly gone to um, GPML tournaments, so it's the Great Plains Math League tournaments, and so that's like a national league that um, students can participate in and those um, we have there's events where there's single team, like an individual event, then there's teams of six, and they'll do like the whole like part of competition together as a team of six, and then there's also teams of three, and then so those teams of six will split up into teams of three, and they'll do those events as that little group of three. Angela Lee is a member of both math team and math honor society. Um, well, I've like learned how to like solve like complicated problems. Because like in the normal math class, like you would like n learn the concepts, but they won't teach you how to do like the complicated word problems. But in the math competitions, like that's like what the whole thing is about. It's about like the word problems and not like just solving for concepts. Okay, so Miss Garrison usually gives us these practice tests she's printed out, and we'll like work through them individually through like a timer because that's how like it is during the contests and then afterwards we'll go through the problems and like we'll help each other out if we don't understand how to solve something. For more information about Math Honor Society or Math Team contact Alyssa Picorni. For Eagle Air TV this has been Abigail Coburn. Hey Al, what's a new band you've been listening to recently? Well there's this new band at the high school that's been gaining some attention. Let's take a look. Looking for a new band to listen to? Well, here at Nixa High School, a band has recently been getting some attention. Isaac Williams speaks about how he enjoys the band, Born in Winter. Yeah, I can see them form, forming a very, very interesting sound to the ears. They've got a uh, great diversity in their um, textures and in their dynamics and in their influences, as far as I can hear. And I'd, I'd love to see it, love to see where they go next. And I'm very fortunate and glad to be here on their first, first, first day. 
Speaking of the unique sound, I sat down with the band to figure out how they came up with it. I mean, just playing around, really. Yeah, I mean, honestly. So many different tunings, so many different brand practices. Like we used to We've be gone like... through about four different tunings. Yeah. And we finally landed on this one like a month, a month if ago. You go, if you go through our uh, our SoundCloud, you oh, can God. you can clearly tell. I mean, where like we started. Yeah, we've spent hours before just to, just doing nothing except trying to tune different drums to different to to make different noises. The band also happened to gain overnight success. The last song that we played tonight, and and I, which is called Eyes Closed, and it was. Probably the one that kicked us off. Sort of. Because it has like 6,500 plays, 1,100 likes. Yeah, six, yeah, around Instagram 62. I think it was around 6,200. And then, like, on Instagram, we gained like 1,200 uh, followers just within. Yeah, it was like overnight. A it was day. Crazy. Right I now. actually got a phone call from Colton. Yeah, the I did. said next morning, yeah. he asked me, Did you see how many likes it got? Yeah, because so, I was hanging out with my girlfriend, and he calls me, and he's like, or no, he texted me, he's like, we need to have a talk, yeah. which terrified me. And then he's like, it's very serious. I was like, oh, what happened? And then he calls me and he's like, look at SoundCloud. If you would like to check out Born in Winter for yourself, you can look them up on SoundCloud or Instagram. This is Nathaniel Visconti signing off for Eagle Air News. Boys soccer is ongoing. Emory York tells us about the season. The soccer season is off to a great start. However, the season is not quite to an end. Let's continue to give support to our hardworking team. Soccer coach Evan Palmer says he loves coaching his team and appreciates the student section. I've loved the game since I was a kid. Love playing it. And um, I, I got into the coaching thing. Um, when I was in high school, I do little clinics for kids, and then in college, I continued that. So I just thought that you know, that the best thing was next to playing would be coaching, and I've really enjoyed that. Um, being around the, the young, uh, the young people has been a lot of fun. You know, we have boys in the fall and then girls in the spring, so it's it's a lot of fun with both groups, and uh, it keeps me feeling young too. What well, this year we've seen really good attendance from students. We've had a really good student section. Keep coming out. The guys really like it. It's helped us a lot. And uh, if you get out there, you'll see what a fun sport it is. And it's very physical. Not many people realize how physical it is. There's a lot of good hard hits that happen, slide tackles. Um, and uh, it's just a fun sport. and It's a fun game to watch. So come on out and see us play. Senior player Zach Volger says he is proud of his teammates. I think Colin Cash and Carson Palmer. I'm pretty proud of them this year. Colin has stepped up big time in the back line and everything like that. So I'd say using both feet is pretty challenging. And also, like, working as a team and knowing your teammates' strengths and weaknesses. Come support your Nixus soccer team boys for the games that they have left. For Eagle Air TV, this is Emory York reporting. The spooky season has arrived, and so have the questions. Ryan Visconti asked some Halloween-themed questions to some students. Today we are at Nixa High School asking some spooky questions to some of the Nixa High School students. Let's go. Audio Jungle. Audio Jungle. Two questions real quick. No, 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 no. Yep. Yes, way, yes, way. No, I'm doing my whole... Wait. Wait, put the camera down. Put the camera. Yeah, it is. <laughs> is Halloween overrated or underrated? Very underrated, you know. Whenever you get to dress up, I mean, you got to take it. You get free candy. It's a great holiday. Okay, um, would you rather party or go trick-or-treating? Oh, trick-or-treating, because trick um, me and my sister are going to be doing some stuff from a musical called Grease. Who are you dressing up as? Danny Zuko and my sister's dressing up as Sandy. Gotcha, thank you. All right. So, top three horror movies. Um, Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger, and... Uh, it. Oh, it. Okay. Uh, worst Halloween candy. Um, Snickers. Snickers. Volante. We're gonna ask you a question, okay? Um, favorite Halloween movie. Uh, I'm gonna have to go. With, um, the Michael Myers movies. All the Halloweens are good. My man. What is the worst Halloween candy? Candy corn. Oh, so is candy corn overrated, you would say? Yeah, it's overrated. Overrated. Yes. Uh, favorite Halloween candy? Oh, 
Oh, oh, oh, the little things where you have to stick the powder in it. The oh, fun, fun dip or whatever yes, that's called? Yes, fun dip. Um, and also bubble gum. Bubble gum. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, favorite horror movie? Uh, Scream. Scream? Hey! Get that. Okay, thank you. We're just asking one question. Oh, sir, can I ask you a question real quick? Okay. For the camera? Okay. Um, what is your biggest fear? I'm really uh, trying to use these uh, uh, yeah, I want to eat. Dementia, I guess. The what? Dementia, I don't Dementia? Know. Okay, thank you. Favorite horror movie, Noah. Noah, favorite horror movie. I don't watch horror. horror okay. Uh, favorite uh, Halloween candy? <laughs> Skittles. Skittles, thank you. In five, four, three, two. Hi, I'm Phoebe. And I'm Lily, and welcome back to this week's announcements. There will be no school Friday the 28th. Seniors, remember to complete your FAFSA. They opened on October 1st. Election day is November 8th. Check Wingspan to see what's on the ballot. If you're interested in donating toys for Christmas time, contact Ms. Myler for more information. Good luck to our fellow Eagle Air members competing in the four state competition this weekend. Congratulations to all of our sports teams who are competing in districts, and good luck. Honor Choir is performing at Evangel University on November 5th. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Eagle Air TV. Stay safe this Halloween season, and remember, you matter. Make sure to go check out nixajournalism.net. Oh, she oh, thinks she's got, got it. it. Oh, oh you she think, think you got, got it. it. But her, her face got is it. so this weird and her hair gets all mad.